Hey there, and welcome back, BMETs. I know electrons are negatively charged, but I hope you're staying positive because after today's lecture, you've made it through the first section of Course 102. And that's lit. You know what else is lit? Today's rewind video. And today, you learned about a few more amplifiers and two new components, the JFET and the MOSFET. So if I could pull your attention to the first amplifier, the push-pull amplifier. The purpose of a push-pull amplifier is going to be to power other circuits or amplifiers, but we're still amplifying AC. The circuit consists of two transistors and a voltage divider network, along with an input and output coupling capacitor. Q1 is going to be an NPN transistor and Q2 is going to be a PNP transistor. Now they're considered matched transistors because it will not work if they're the same type of transistor. Additionally, they're operating in class B mode of operation. Now, when both transistors are on, immediately they're going to just split the 12 volts applied in half on the emitters. Knowing this, we can figure out what the base voltages should be for them to stay on. For Q1, it needs to be 0.6 greater on the base, so 6.6 .6 volts. And for Q2, it needs to be 0.6 less, so 5.4 volts. Now, again, I did say we're bringing in AC. So eventually that AC coming in is going to alternate positive, which will be felt on both bases of our transistors. For Q1, let's say it increases the voltage up to 6.7. Well, that's greater than 0.6, so Q1's gonna stay on. For Q2, on the other hand, when it goes up to 5.5, we're no longer 0.6 less, so it turns off. Now this places a positive potential on the left side of C2, which is going to attract electrons up through RL to the right side of C2, developing a positive alternation on the output. What goes up must come out, so that incoming AC is now going to turn negative, and that 6.7 on the base of Q1 may go down to 6.5, which now we do not meet the 0.6 requirement, so Q1 is going to turn off, and 5.5 maybe on the base of Q2 becomes 5.3 and Q2 is going to turn on now. That places a more negative charge on the left side of C2 which is going to repel those electrons or push those electrons down through RL creating a negative alternation. So knowing that we can say on the positive alternation of the input we're pulling electrons up through RL and on the negative alternation, we are pushing electrons. So you could even call it the pull push instead of the push pull. Now let's move on to our next component. The next component we're gonna talk about is the JFET. And you can identify it by the schematic symbol as shown. It consists of a drain, a source, and a gate. And it is a normally on device. So when VDD is applied or the voltage applied to the drain, current immediately is gonna flow source to drain. Another key trait is that it operates on a reverse bias, or VGS, which stands for the voltage difference between the source and the gate. Now let's actually look at the PN junction so we can actually discuss the operation. The gate is actually attached to some P material. So when I say it operates on a reverse bias, I mean the gate will never be more positive than the end material of the source. So let's actually look at this. When current's actually flowing source to drain, there's usually going to be some baseline voltage sitting on the source. In this case, let's just say it's two volts. Now, I'm gonna place two volts on the gate as well. So right now, the voltage difference between the gate and the source, or VGS, is zero. It is at this point, since I said we're not gonna ever forward bias the PN junction, that current flow is at its maximum right now. Now, for the reverse bias part, let's take that two volts and turn it into one volt. Notice, that when I reverse bias that PN junction, that P material is squeezing down or that PN junction is squeezing that N channel. That's gonna restrict current flow. And right now our VGS is at one. Now let's take that one volt and make it zero volts. Notice that PN junction is squeezing down on that channel and my VGS, it went up to two. Let's do it one more time. Eventually, the more you reverse bias the PN junction or the gate, Eventually, you're going to squeeze that end channel so much that you place this JFET into cutoff. And right now, our VGS went up to three. 
Now that we've kind of discussed the operation, let's actually put this into a JFET amplifier circuit so we can see how this guy works. The purpose of a JFET amplifier is to increase signal strength, just like all of our other amplifiers. And some key traits or things to note about it is that this JFET amplifier is configured as a common source. So that three volts sitting on the source is not going to change. Our input is gonna come in on the gate and the output is gonna be taken from the drain. Now, another thing to note is that the output is gonna be 180 degrees out of phase, kind of like a common emitter amplifier. Now, let's bring in some AC. When that signal alternates positive, so in this case, six volts peak to peak, as that signal alternates positive from zero to three volts, it's getting closer to that voltage on the source. Well, that means the voltage difference, or VGS, is going down. And that means that we're decreasing the reverse bias, so that PN junction is gonna squeeze that channel less. So that PN junction is gonna decrease. Now if I'm opening up the channel by relaxing that PN junction grip, my channel's going up. And if the channel gets bigger, we're gonna be able to have more current flow. More drain current means that our drain resistor, R2, is gonna have a greater voltage drop, which means that the voltage present on the drain is gonna go down. And since our output's taken from the drain, we develop a negative alternation on the drain. But what goes up must come down. When that AC signal alternates negative, now we're getting further away from that three volts on the source. So we're increasing reverse bias in VGS, which means that PN junction is getting bigger and squeezing down on that channel, which means the channel's getting smaller. Smaller channel means that there's less current that can flow. So we have less drain current. Less drain current through our drain resistor R2 means that its voltage drop is going to decrease, leaving more voltage on the drain. And since the output's taken from the drain, we develop that positive alternation. But we have an amplifier here, so we have to talk about AV for a second. Now with the JFET amplifier, we have measured AV, which means we have to take E out divided by E in. But additionally, we can calculate what the AV is so we could actually compare the two. And you'll need to be able to do this. So we're gonna take GM, or transconductance, times the value of the drain resistor, R2. So for example, if we have a GM of five milli MHz, we're gonna take that value and multiply it by 15 kilo ohms. So go ahead and take a second and see if you can get it right. You should have gotten 75 for an AV. And remember, pro tip, Right? There will never be a unit of measure on the end of that AV. It's a multiplier. So if you do that, remember, you are wrong. Now let's move on to our last topic. MOSFETs. Metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors, or MOSFETs for short. Pro tip, remember that the name is basically going to be telling us what the gate is responsible for. First is the enhancement type in-channel MOSFET. Notice how the arrow is pointing in. This is an indicator that it is an in-channel pointing in. Now every in-channel MOSFET when it's conducting will have current that flows from the source to the drain. Now see the broken line in this schematic symbol? This tells me that it's an enhancement type and that it will not conduct until it receives sufficient gate voltage or as we say in class, you gotta gate it on. Next, the enhancement type P-channel MOSFET with an arrow facing away from the channel. Still, the gate voltage will gate it on because it's an enhancement type and will allow current flow this time from drain to source. Next is the depletion type in-channel MOSFET, which works similar to a JFET because it's normally on when VDD is applied and current flows from source to drain. The gate voltage will slowly force it into cutoff, much like a JFET. And lastly, the depletion type P-channel MOSFET uses negative VDD and is normally on, but this time current flows from drain to source. And again, the gate voltage is going to be responsible for eventually placing it into cutoff. Again, here are all the MOSFETs. Make sure that you can identify the difference between them and know what the purpose of the gate voltage is for. And with that, thank you guys so much for listening. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date on upcoming Rewind videos. And more importantly, 
make sure you guys review days three and four because you guys will see some of that stuff on your progress check tomorrow. Oh, and remember, keep being awesome. BMAT out.